Hey everybody, welcome back to Bespoke in the Burbs. On today's episode, we're talking about the finishes in all the bathrooms and the laundry rooms. Hi, I'm Ramson Kachi. I'm the founder and principal of Kachi Design Build and Stone Lab Surfaces. I've been in the design and construction industry for over 25 years. I've decided to do an entire series around my own personal real estate investment. I'll be taking a builder's custom-like home and then taking it to an entirely new level. Welcome to Bespoke in the Burbs. If you recall, as we were walking through Innerstone, I fell in love with this porcelain panel for the master ensuite, and that's where the inspiration started. Couple that with a bathroom I had done before that had really a beautiful, elegant look to it. Together, that was my starting inspiration for this bathroom. So when we look at the inspiration board here, and you look at that bathroom and the textures in there, and then pull in the feel of that porcelain panel, that's what really brings everything together. That bathroom had a mosaic floor, and it was a floral mosaic floor I want to go with more of a simple mosaic floor in this bathroom so I'm gonna to go to a 2 by 2 quartzite mosaic floor it's beautiful it's elegant it's got a certain level of opulence to it and I love that and it works beautifully with this porcelain panel this is gonna be gorgeous now we're gonna add accents of Lux gold so the fixtures are all gonna be Lux gold we're gonna add a little bit more of that Lux gold in the vanity and some of the detail around the vanity now the vanity is an important part of this bathroom you you want a lot of storage, you want a lot of functionality. Now, because I don't like to compartmentalize things, I want that vanity to feel like it's going all the way across that wall where the toilet is. So now it kind of houses the toilet and encapsulates the vanity area. I've got these columns that go around. And then there's mirrors inlaid in the panels and then wall sconces laid on top of that. So everything kind of blends together. And that's what it's all about. It's just to transition things together nicely so it doesn't compartmentalize the space, especially when you're dealing with a small space. Now the vanity is gonna be a painted product, so it's gonna be lacquered. It's gonna be lacquered in a really light color to brighten things up. And what I was hoping to do is take the door and actually take the inside panel and do a high polish to it. That was gonna be very expensive. So step back and go to step two. Option two is to go to crown wallpaper and select a beautiful textured paper and inlay that panel with that wallpaper. It's gonna give me texture, tone on tone. It's gonna to create some interest and it's gonna look beautiful. Now those porcelain panels carry around the entire bathroom. We've got our light fixtures and everything blends well, but to pull everything together, I'm gonna to go back to crown again and look at a wallpaper, a commercial vinyl. That's what it's all about for me because number one they're wide panels fewer seams very durable scrubbable washable they look beautiful and it's going to give me the texture I want that will pull the look for this entire bathroom together now let's talk about another important bathroom in the house the powder room In an earlier episode, we talked about continuity. Now, it's really important with this powder room. We've got a tile finish in the front foyer, and we went up to Milton Hardwood, selected a gorgeous hardwood floor from Vintage Flooring that's gonna go throughout the rest of the main floor. I wanna create some continuity into that powder room so that it feels like it belongs there. So I'm gonna take that hardwood, I'm gonna carry it into the powder room as a simple border. Not a big border, maybe one strip of wood, about four or five inches as a border around that powder room. Then we're gonna take a tile that we used on the foyer and we're gonna inset that as a detail centered inside that border. That's gonna give our foundation to work with. We've also got some gorgeous plaster molding going on the ceilings. So the ceiling's taken care of, the floor's taken care of. What do we do with the walls? How do we make it interesting, elegant, exciting, and, and, and just simply beautiful? I'm gonna panel the walls. I've decided I'm gonna do just simple MDF paneling on the walls. We're gonna take some four inch styles and rails and wrap it all around the walls everywhere. I've got a pedestal sink going in. It's a Callista pedestal. It's beautiful with a Callista faucet. It's got a gold accent to it. That's gonna set the tone. The level of elegance is there is gonna be set. Then I'm gonna set in some mirror in front and on the left and right side of that pedestal. That's gonna give me a lot of reflection, obviously functionality, but also some reflection within the space. And the question here is, do I go with clear mirror or smoked mirror? 
I want to keep the drama in there, so I think I might go with a smoke. A smoke mirror that has a little bit of a grayish bronze undertone. So then after that, we're going to set some beautiful wall sconces on the left and right. And then we also got a powder, uh, pot light that's going to be over top just to give a little bit of light into the space. And then to create drama, I'm going to go to my Sherwin-Williams fan deck and select a beautiful dramatic color. Now it's called Gaunt, uh, Gauntlet Grey. It's very dramatic, it's dark, but that's going to set the tone for this beautiful silk wallpaper that I'm going to put on the inside of all the other panels. Now we've got a beautiful symphony of textures and colors that's just going to look spectacular within that powder room. Now let's go upstairs and talk about the rest of the bathrooms. There are two other bathrooms upstairs. One of them is an ensuite, and the inspiration from the ensuite came from my daughter, Brianna. Now, we selected the tiles, and we were looking at tiles. I selected a subway tile for the shower stall area. What's interesting with that subway is that it's got a beautiful gray banding around the outside. It's gonna offer a wonderful texture on the walls. On the floor, we went more delicate and a little more feminine with a floral pattern that's got these whites and grays in it, and it's a mix of marbles and granites, and that's gonna go on the floor and offer a a lot of interest on that floor. So that's our foundation. And when we look at the inspiration board here, you'll see that we've got some black lines. We've got this delicate pattern here. We've got chrome faucets, which are economical. There's no sense in going into fancy finishes and secondary bathrooms. We've got these pill-like pendant lights, and I'm gonna come back to that. Most importantly is the wood detail that you see. That's because I wanted to bring in a little bit of an earth tone in there, just to warm things up. And I'm doing that with the vanity. So when we look at the vanity and the way it's designed, the inspiration is to have this fine fluted detail. So that little bit of beading on the drawer fronts is going to add that delicate detail that I want. It's got a gorgeous oak frame. I'm going to make it out of oak. And then on the bottom, those black lines really are the black rods that are going to offer a platform there to fold up some towels and place them down there. And then we're going to have some accents which are also going to be black throughout. Let's go back Back to these pill pendants here. These are also going to be black, so if I kind of color these in, you'll see that you're going to have some of that black texture coming into the space, and that's going to round things up nicely. So it's all about balance. You got to look at where you bring all these colors in. And then you'll notice the texture on top of the vanity and on the back wall. That's because I want to use a quartzite product for a countertop and on the back wall. Quartzite is a natural product. It's actually stronger. A lot of them are stronger than granite. So they're very resilient when it comes to staining. We're not going to go into a man-made quartz product. We're going to use a quartzite which has a lot of beautiful tones and you can see here these tones really pull everything together. Whether it's the black detail, chrome, some of the gray, some of the soft grays, everything comes together within this quartzite. So it's going to wrap on that countertop and all the way up the wall. Those pill shaped pendants are going to hang on either side of the vanity. So I don't want to go with wall sconces that are attached to the wall. I'm going to actually hang them so they're away from the walls and just suspended on either side. So it's going to give you well-rounded lighting uh, that you would need in a bathroom. And then lastly, again, to pull everything together, I'm going to turn back to crown wallpaper and I've selected this wallpaper here for the rest of the walls. Again, a commercial vinyl that's very durable, but beautiful texture. It's going to pull all these colors together. The other bathroom upstairs is a semi-ensuite. It's shared by two bedrooms. So I want it to be a little bit more neutral, not as dramatic. Uh, so I'm gonna go with a beautiful neutral tile in the shower stall. It's this gorgeous white tile. I just love the texture of it. So let's look at the inspiration. We've got that tile in the shower, but you'll see we've got this hexagon tile on the floor. That is really where the interest comes within that space. It's got this contrasting border around these white tiles. That's gonna set the tone in that space space. We've got chrome faucets, we've got that gorgeous white tile going on the walls, and then I wanted to do a vanity that's simple and white, but I wanted to bring some interest to it. So let's look at that vanity detail. That vanity is going to have some black or dark stripes here, you'll notice, and those dark stripes are actually finger poles that are cut out of the drawer fronts, so your fingers fit in. Inside there, we're going to paint it a darker color. It's called Elephant Ear from Sherwin-Williams. It's going to pick up on this contrast. 
contrasting color here. So now we've got some of that continuity. We do have a challenge because that bathroom is at the front of the house. It's kind of partially up in the roof space, which means that we've got this angle here on the top right of that mirror, which creates a problem. So I can do one of two things. I can do a mirror here that really compartmentalizes the space and makes this vanity feel small, or I can take that and stretch it all the way along, stay back about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half all the way around, float it with a nice chrome detail around it, and then we'll set the wall sconce right on top of it. That way it makes the space feel bigger. We've got the vanity underneath, the toilet, and on the other side we can see that we've got the shower stall there. And then lastly again, we're gonna pull everything together with this wallpaper. That's gonna give me the texture and the color and the binding element that I want to pull it all together. Lastly, let's head to the basement because that bathroom I think is probably the most dramatic out of all of these. The inspiration for the basement bathroom comes primarily from my son, Dane, and the fact that close to this bathroom is the home theater, the gym, it's really kind of his pad, so I wanted this masculine feel within the space. The inspiration comes from this grouping of materials and colors. This cappuccino tile here was most of my inspiration. You can see the warm tones within that space. Well, I mimic that throughout the entire space. So we've got some colors that start from mid-tones to dark tones, so let's go through some of those details. When we look at the elevation, we've got a floating vanity here. Above that, we've got a mirror, and then we've got two wall sconces. Most importantly, at the end of that bathroom, we've got that shower stall. Now, the tile on the floor carries through the shower stall and on the walls as well, and it's a neutral tile. But to create that drama, I'm gonna use a smoked glass within that shower stall. So let's go through some of the other materials. The vanity is gonna be this metallic uh, textured finish here. That's gonna look beautiful. It's very masculine. We've got a brush nickel fixture and detail throughout. I might accent the vanity with some black detail with some powder coated metal. And then we've got this Madra Parola that's gonna wrap that vanity, go into that shower opening for the shower jams. Lastly, to pull all this together, I've gotta to make a decision. Do I go with a nice subtle wallpaper paper in there or do I go with something a little bit more dramatic? Well, I'm kind of leaning towards the dramatic. Maybe you guys can push me off the fence either way, but that's the look. Give me your comments. Next step, let's talk about some laundry rooms. As you recall, I created two laundry rooms in this house. One in the top floor, one in the basement. Now the basement one is within a transitional space. It's actually a walkthrough where you walk into the basement bedroom. So we've got uh, some cabinetry along the wall that's gonna be done in this melamine product here. And then we've got this Madra Parola quartz that's gonna have the countertop and the wraparound on the machines. And let me explain to you how that works. Now, the flooring is all hardwood there, so that that's one thing to keep in mind. If there is a problem with the machines, I don't want that problem to affect the flooring that's adjacent to that space. So we've got this elevation where we've got cabinetry on the left, we've got cabinetry above, and then we've got the machines on the right side. They slide in here and sit beside their compact machines that go under the counter. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna border this space with quartz onto the floor create a ledge and up the side and that border is going to create a pan inside that's going to keep the water in that wet area so it's going to prevent any leaks from coming out to the hardwood flooring so that quartz is going to wrap around there's a drain underneath there so when they actually um, you know, did the basement, I had them put a drain right underneath the machine. So now, if there's a leak in that space, it goes down that drain, it doesn't come out, it doesn't affect the hardwood. The cabinetry around is all melamine, so it's all functional. You've got lots of storage space, but you've got machines down there that you can use. So when you got a lot of people doing laundry in a house, one set of machines is never enough. Having that secondary laundry space on the second floor is gonna be priceless. Now, we didn't add space, we had to rework the floor plan to make more room for that laundry room to exist upstairs. And it's worked out just right. It's not a big room, but it's a good room. So the cabinetry is simple. We've got some base cabinets for a sink cabinet below. We've got some upper cabinets above, a small storage cabinet 
it above where the machines are going to go, and then we've got our countertop. A couple of things to note. I put the shutoff for the machines down in this open area. In front of that is going to be a couple of hampers. So that's going to be covered. It's not going to be obnoxious and in the way. So it's going to be somewhere very subtle and out of the way, but easily accessible, and that's important. With regards to machines, I decided to go with the LG single unit front load wash tower. Full capacity, sleek in design, but the importance here is this is where you generate a lot of the heavy laundry, towels, bedding, things like that, and these machines can handle it. They'll give you the capacity you want and the wash, and that's why it's important to think that way with these kind of laundry spaces on the second floor. So let's look at the design elements in this space. The tile is rug home. If you remember me saying Saying that was my go-to tile for tough spaces. This is a tough space. This tile is going to work beautifully in that space. It's very neutral. And then for the countertop, we're going to go back this, to this Madra Parola. The cabinetry is going to be a lacquered white. So we've got this beautiful, simple look. The machines do their job. And then we've got some square wall sconces on the walls for lighting. And then we got secondary lighting over top of the cabinetry here. There's a reason for that. Why am I not putting pot lights? There's no room to put them. We've got access to the attic space in that laundry room. I don't like attic hatches to be in closets and places that are very difficult to get to. So to me, this was the best place to put it. But the challenge with that is it takes up the ceiling and we can't put pot lights. Nevertheless, we've made it work. I feel good about where I'm going with this. And I think this room is gonna come together really nicely as well. That brings us to the end of this episode. I can't wait to show you how all these vision boards start to come to life. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and make sure you comment. Let me know what you think, because I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'll see you on the next one.